What's up guys, hope you're all having a fantastic day. So in this video, I'll be going over all the Extreme Sea Awakenings that global players can expect to receive pretty much for the rest of 2019. Now, for the most part, I'll be presenting them in the order that they were released on JP, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Global will follow that exact release schedule. Although honestly, it's probably gonna be pretty damn close. Now, believe it or not, JP actually has 15 Extreme Z Awakenings that aren't yet available on Global. So this could be a pretty long video. I'm gonna try to get through them as quickly as possible without rushing too much. So let's see how we do. But without further ado, let's jump right into it, starting with the first Extreme Z Awakening that is confirmed to be coming next to Global, Physical Kid Boo, and specifically his event will be available on January 23rd, which is only a couple days after the release of this video. So Physical Kid Boo, if I'm being honest, is one of the less hyped Extreme Z Awakenings, mainly because he's not all about damage output, right? A lot of people are really excited about Int Janemba and how much damage he can do, or STR Gogeta, or Tech Beerus and all that stuff because they're damage dealers. But when it comes to Kid Buu, it's a little bit less exciting because his damage, even after Extreme Z Awakening, even after you get him to level 140 to SA15, he's not gonna be hitting really that much harder than he did before. He will be hitting harder, don't get me wrong. Like he'll do a lot more damage than before, but it's not such a significant amount to be excited about. But the main thing that I'm excited for, and you should be as well, is the fact that Physical Kid Boot is going to be one of the best support units in this entire game once he gets his EZA. And uh, you'll see why in just a second, but let's start with his leader skill from the top. So his old leader skill was allies attack increased by up to 50% based on HP left, which was pretty awful. <laughs> and his new leader skill is all types key plus 3 and HP and defense plus 50% and raises attack by up to 80%. The more HP remaining, the greater the attack boost, which is significantly better, but honestly, most people are still probably not gonna use him as a leader. His super attack now causes immense damage versus supreme damage and still lowers defense. And his passive, which is the thing they should really be paying attention to for Kid Buu, is now all allies key plus two and attack and defense plus 50% when HP is 80% or above. Okay, so there's HP restriction, but all allies attack and defense plus 30% when HP is 79% or below, which is still very respectable. So if you compare that to his old passive, it used to be attack and defense plus 50% for all allies when HP is 80% or above, and that's it. If you went below the 80% threshold, he was pretty much useless because he wasn't hitting that hard, and now he wasn't even supporting you, so he was pretty much dead weight on that team. But now he's gonna be a support unit no matter what level of HP you're at. And of course, when you're above 80% HP, he's gonna have, like I said, the best support passive in the game at attack and defense 50% and plus two key as well. And even if you fall below 79%, it's still a very respectable buff of 30% to attack and defense. So Kid Buu is gonna be extremely, extremely good for support for any team that you can run him on. And uh, I'm very excited for that. As far as his links, they stayed the same. You can read it there. His categories are Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, and Transformation Boost. And his new stats actually are quite nice as, uh, I mean, they usually all are. So his HPs actually go up to 21,475, 16,000 attack, which is really good. But again, like I said, he's not mainly about attack. So don't expect him to do a crazy amount of damage. I'm sure if you rainbow him, he can do you know, over a million damage fairly consistently, but don't expect anything too much beyond that. And his defense is gonna be 10,203. And also, if you guys are interested, the weakness for this event is actually, you know what, I totally forgot. Give me one sec. All right, so as I was saying, the weakness for Physical Kid Boo's Extreme Z Battle event is going to be the Pure Saiyans category. So there you go, Physical Kid Buu, the next Extreme Z Awakening coming to Global. He's going to be an extremely good support unit and I'm very excited for him. Now, moving on, we have STR Super Saiyan 3 Goku and he should be dropping at the same time or around the same time as Physical Kid Buu. They are bringing back the Super Saiyan 3 Goku Extreme Z Battle, which is where you collect the medals for him. So I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Now, as far as he goes, he is not a Dokkan Fest exclusive, so don't expect him to be as good as the Dokkan Fest exclusive Extreme Z Awakenings, although he is still very solid. So his leader skill goes from all types attack plus 30% to all types key plus 2, HP attack and defense plus 50%, which is much better. 
his super attack is now drag. Well, actually, it was Dragon Fist, anyways. But it causes supreme damage and greatly lowers the enemy's defense as opposed to just lowers. So a little bit of a buff, still the same attack multiplier or damage multiplier rather, um, which is to be expected for these kinds of units. I know a lot of people were hoping for immense damage for him as well, like the AGL Super Saiyan 3 Goku, but it seems like they are keeping the immense damage exclusively for Dokkan Fest exclusives, and for the non Dokkan Fest exclusives, they are keeping them at supreme damage. Anyways, moving on to his passive. It goes from attack plus 80% when HP is 30% or above, which was okay but fairly mediocre, to now defense plus 40%, so some tanking, and attack plus 80% when HP is 30% or above, plus an additional attack plus 30% when HP is 50% or above, plus an additional attack plus 30% when HP is 80% or above. So basically, if you are above 80% HP, you'll get the full buff of 140%. If you are between 50% to 80%, you'll get 110%. And if you're below 50% but above 30%, you'll get the 80% attack. I don't know if that made sense to you guys. <laughs> I try to explain it as concisely as possible. Basically, he can get a maximum of 140% attack now, which is quite significant. So he's going to do a lot more damage than before. And uh, his stats now go up to 15,942 for attack, 16,171 for HP, and 9,818 for defense. Okay, moving on to the next one now. And this might, you know, surprise a few people because obviously this actually came out a lot later on JP compared to some of the other Extreme Z Awakenings, but we know pretty much confirmed that the Broly and Gogeta Broly movie celebration is happening in uh, February for Global. Pretty much the beginning of February is when the celebration actually begins, and then the banners themselves will drop around the middle of February. So if we go by that, then the next Extreme Z battle, Extreme Z Awakening on Global after the Kid Buu and the STR Super Saiyan 3 Goku should be this AGL Wrathful Broly. And <laughs> the thing is, like, they literally dropped his Extreme Z Awakening a couple days maybe on JP after the card itself was released, which is kind of weird, but you know what, it's fully welcome because this guy becomes an absolute monster, guys. I'm not even playing. I'm not playing. He is amazing. I have the guy with no dupes and this guy regularly hits for over 2 million. His leader skill, post Extreme Z Awakening, is pure Saiyan's category, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 120%, which is actually amazing considering it's not that far off from Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. And he also acts as an extreme AGL lead, giving them key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 100%. So amazing, amazing leader skill right there. His super attack raises attack and defense for 3 turns and causes supreme damage to the enemy. And his passive gives him key plus 1 at the start of each turn. Attack and defense plus 70%, plus an additional defense plus 20% with each attack performed up to 80%, and attack plus 20% with each attack received up to 80%. So you might be like, damn, that's actually a pretty significant increase after he you know, performs four attacks and receives four attacks, but that's not even the full story. Let's just jump down here real quick. So here it says his additional attack and defense boosts are calculated separately, and the additional boost for every attack received slash performed increases to 34% after Extreme Z Awakening. So for a total, after you perform 4 attacks and you receive 4 attacks, this guy gets an additional boost to attack and defense of 206%, which is why this unit is so freaking ridiculous, especially considering that he's not a Dokkan Fest exclusive. After the Broly banner, he's going to be available in every single banner from then on as part of the unfeatured pool, which is absolutely fantastic because he is such a good unit, and I'm very excited for his release and hopefully to pull him and then Extreme Z awaken him right after. So there you go, there is the AGL Wrathful Broly, and the weakness for his event is actually Movie Heroes. Okay, moving on, real quick, we got two free-to-play units. So we got this uh, AGL Jacket Super Saiyan Blue Goku, actually a really, really good unit, especially for a free-to-play unit. He gets an Extreme Z Awakening, so you farm him, from the Broly movie story event, and then you can Extreme Z Awaken him with medals that you get from the uh, AGL Wrathful Broly Extreme Z battle. So, 
His uh, leader skill is actually a movie hero's leader skill, and it's really solid. He plus 3 HP, attack and defense plus 77%. So as far as a free-to-play category lead goes, that's the best we've gotten so far. And he also gives AGL types key plus 2 HP, attack and defense plus 30%. Uh, God Kamehameha greatly raises attack for one turn and costs supreme damage to enemy. And his passive is attack and defense plus 77% plus additional key plus 4 and defense plus 50% when facing a movie boss's category enemy. So um, as far as this card goes, it's from what I've heard and what I've actually tested myself on JP as well, he is actually one of, if not the best Super Saiyan Blue Goku in the game right now, which is very sad considering the other ones are summonable. This guy is free to play, and he hits pretty much on par with AGL Super Saiyan Blue Goku or any of the other Super Saiyan Blue. Actually, AGL probably hits the hardest right now, and he hits on par with him, so... Yeah, these free-to-play cards are getting really, really good. Moving on, now we also have the Jacket Vegeta. And uh, he's pretty much the same card, honestly, as the Super Saiyan Blue Goku, except that he gets a 50% attack boost as opposed to defense boost when facing movie bosses category uh, enemies. And uh, other than that, everything else, I believe, is the same. There might be minor differences. Also, he gives tech types, key plus 2, HP attack defense plus 30% as opposed to AGL types. And uh, that's pretty much it. So two fantastic, fantastic free-to-play units that are getting Extreme Z Awakenings pretty much like a couple days, a week after their, or two weeks or so after they're released. Um, and I would recommend everybody to do that as well because they're really, really solid. Now. The next Dokkan Fest exclusive that will be getting a Extreme Z Awakening after those guys is most likely going to be Tech Beerus. And uh, I mean, <laughs> there's no shortage of good things to say about Tech Beerus. Absolute, absolute monster. His leader skill now is uh, Tech Type key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 90%. So basically, the OG 5 LR leader skill, the same as LR Goku Black. And uh, if you guys don't have a good tech leader, he's actually a really, really good option for that. Um, his super attack causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense. So the immense damage multiplier, I think I mentioned before that it is pretty much exclusive to Dokkan Fest exclusive. So there you go. His passive gives him attack and defense plus 80% at the start of the turn, plus an additional 40% attack for four turns after receiving an attack. And he rages when HP is 40% or below up to two times. So a lot of fantastic changes right here. He gets 80% attack as opposed to 60% attack from before. And he also gets 80% defense, so he's a lot more tanky. And plus that additional 40% attack every time he takes an attack. And he can rage up to two times now as opposed to one time from before. And it's easier to get the rage mode off because you have to be below 40% now as opposed to 30% before. So just overall a much, much better unit. And he also has the same treatment as the Broly where the 40% attack is calculated separately for a total boost of 152% attack after being attacked. And once the first four turns are over, it can activate again once he receives another attack. And let me just tell you, this guy hits super, super freaking hard. Um, after he gets Extreme Z Awakening, his attack stat goes up to 19,223, which is a big part of why he does so much damage, because that's like an LR attack stat, man. Like, obviously not duped out, but as far as like a um, no dupe, like free dupe LR goes, that's pretty much around the attack you can expect. And uh, then you take into consideration the 152% attack boost. This guy is doing crazy, crazy damage, and of course he also has the rage mode. He has three different super attacks when he's in rage mode, and uh, it's basically like a giant form essentially, but now that giant form units actually get to keep their uh, hidden potential investment, he's going to be doing significant damage in this mode as well, and of course he's also immune to damage, which is always a good thing, especially for modes like Super Battle Road and stuff like that. So there is Tech Beerus, guys. Um, and the weakness for his event is actually Realm of Gods. So there you go, Tech Beerus, absolutely fantastic. Have him rainbowed personally, so I cannot wait for this Extreme Z Awakening as well. Moving on, I believe, I believe, not 100% sure, but I believe on JP that the Int Perfect Cell also dropped around the same time as Tech Beerus, or at the same time. 
And uh, of course, he just uses medals from the Tech Perfect Cell Extreme Z Battle event. So those two events should probably come out, or that event should come back around the same time that the Tech Beerus event comes out. And this Int Perfect Cell is not a Dokkan Fest exclusive, so he's not going to be as good as the Tech Perfect Cell, but still very good in his own right. Leader skill is all types, key plus 2, HP, attack, and defense plus 50%. Super attack, greatly raises attack, and causes supreme damage to the enemy. And his passive is attack and defense plus 90% at the start of the turn and recovers 20% HP whenever HP is 30% or below. So this is kind of like a last stitch kind of or like last resort kind of thing because ideally you don't want to be below 30% but this guy's going to heal you up in theory up to like 49, 50% HP. So that's actually going to be, that's going to make a huge difference, especially in modes, like I mentioned previously, like Super Battle Road. Like, that's, that's pretty crazy. But look at the difference in his attack and defense buff now. It went from 40% to 50, to 90%, which is a 50% increase. So that's really awesome. And uh, those are his max stats previously. Now these are his new max stats. And uh, everything else is pretty standard. So there is Int Perfect Cell. Huge upgrade. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> the next Dokkan Fest now after Tech Perfect Cell. Sorry, not Tech Perfect Cell. After Tech Beerus and in Perfect Cell is Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, the STR one, who is widely known as one of the best tanks in the game. And he still remains. He still keeps that status, but now he can actually deal a little bit of damage too. Or a lot of damage, I guess. Um, his leader skill goes to SDR types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 90%. Super attack causes immense damage, so supreme to immense, with a high chance to stun the enemy, which is the same, and I believe that chance is 50%. 50% uh, chance to stun the enemy for two turns. There you go. And his passive now reduces attack or reduces damage received by 80% for 10 turns. It used to be 7 turns, but it's still 80%, which is ridiculously high. Ridiculously, ridiculously high. But previously, the issue with the Super Saiyan 3, uh, SDR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta is that he was just a tank and a stunner. He couldn't do anything else. He hit like a wet blanket, right? But now, he actually gets an additional attack plus 120% when the target enemy is stunned. So if he manages to get his high chance to stun off, or we have another unit on the team that can stun as well, and they stun, this guy actually becomes quite a quite a hard hitter. Like, like he actually can deal some really, really solid damage now. And I don't know if there's any additional calculations here. There isn't, but look at that. Okay, so 18,436 attack. I believe that is after Extreme Z Awakening. That is after Extreme Z Awakening. So 18,000 attack, then you factor in 120% attack buff. Lots of damage. Not, not as hard of a hitter, obviously, as Tech Beerus, but significantly better at tanking. Significantly better at tanking than most units in the game still. So um, you got to give him credit for that. Okay, moving on. So we should also get a Extreme Z Awakening for, Super, for the Tech Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Uh, Goku, sorry, Vegeta. And his leader skills all types keep plus 3, HP attack defense plus 40%, supreme damage to enemy and lowers attack, 90% attack at the start of the turn as opposed to 70%, key plus 2, and attack plus 120% when key is 10 or more. So basically, if you can get him to 10 key, then he auto supers, right? Because if you can get him to 10 keys, he gives himself the additional 2 key that he needs to super, and he gets defense plus 120%, so solid tank there. And uh, these are his max stats for anybody that cares. And there we go. Oh, also for Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta's um, Extreme Z Battle Event, the weakness will be Super Saiyan 3 category. Uh, so if you guys have Super Saiyan 3 Barlock, congratulations. If you don't, then you're like me and uh, you'll have to use the type advantage team, which in this case is probably Extreme HEL considering he's a Super STR unit. Okay. Next up, we have a big one in Int Janemba. Int Janemba, man. Um, this is the one I think that kind of like blew a lot of people's minds because this man just got so, so much better. Like the other units, other like Tech Beerus, and Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, and Kid Buu, all those guys got like a lot better, but this guy got stupid amounts of better and his damage output was just off the charts. He actually completely blows STR Janemba out of the water and um, yeah, I mean, 
just ridiculous. Um, his leader skill goes to int types, key plus 3, HP attack defense plus 90%, super attack immense damage, and greatly lowers defense. And his passive attack and defense plus 70% versus plus 5,000 previously, which was ridiculously low. And guard activated against all attacks, so that's the same. Medium chance to evade enemy's attack, which is the same as STR Janemba. And uh, attack plus 40% for 4 turns when guard is activated. Alright, so of course, calculated separately, so that's actually a 138% boost. And uh, yeah, this guy just... <laughs> He's wild. He's wild. Like he's, he's just so so freaking strong. Um, I don't have the damage calculations on hand right now, but if you guys want to go look it up on the Dokkan subreddit, we have some calculations from people like Mobile Man and um, Rather Z as well, and some of those other people that do the calculations. And his damage is is just ridiculous, man. It's just ridiculous. But there is in Janemba. The weakness is fusion, of course, because. You know, he fought against Gogeta in the movie, so that makes sense to me. Fusion category weakness, there we go, in Janemba. Stupid, crazy, ridiculous. Okay, moving on. <laughs> we got two Ultimate Gohan Awakenings that should be dropping around the same time. This is the AGL one. He uh, becomes a fairly solid AGL leader type. Um, key plus two, HP attack defense plus 70%. Supreme damage with a medium chance to stun the enemy. So rare chance to medium chance. And his passive deep focus is attack plus 100% when key is six or more. Defense plus 120% when HP is 80% or above. Defense plus 40% and performs a critical hit once only when HP is 79% or below. So a lot of different parts to this uh, passive basically if you are above 80% HP and he has more than 6 key, which he not he's always going to be if you, you're running a double leader that gives at least 3 key each, uh, he'll have 100% attack and 120% defense, and he will also get additional 40% defense, which probably is calculated separately as well, and has a guaranteed critical when you drop below 79%, but that's only one time for that battle. But um, he, he gets a lot better. He gets a lot better for sure. We're going to move on to the next one, which is the physical ultimate Gohan. He almost is the exact same unit pretty much. I think their super attack is a little bit different. He causes supreme damage and raises attack for six turns. And he's also an all types leader. Key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 40%. But I believe the passive is exactly the same. I believe it's exactly the same. So overall, they're both really good units. I... I, I wouldn't say like one is better than the other. They, they can be run obviously on different teams. One for super physical, one for super AGL. Um, but that's pretty much the main difference because they're essentially the same card. Okay. Next up, we have STR Gogeta. I think this is the one that most people are the most like excited for, the most highly anticipating and I would have to agree with that if you are one of those people. Um, I personally am extremely stupid excited for STR Gogeta because this guy actually is the number one guy I wanted to get an Extreme Z Awakening when I heard about Extreme Z Awakenings being a thing. Like when SSJ3 Goku first was announced as a unit that would be getting this brand new mechanic called an Extreme Z Awakening, I was like, yo, sign me up. Give him to me right now, like I need STR Gogeta to get an Extreme Z Awakening because he was one of the first units, the, one of the first Dual Confidence units that I rainbowed on my account. And um, it's finally happening like after more than a year. The wait was worth it though because man, did they make him a monster. His leader skill is all types, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 77%, so very good rainbow leader skill right there. Um, super attack causes immense damage to the enemy and lowers attack and defense. And his passive is attack and defense plus 77% plus an additional 7% per rainbow key sphere obtained. Attacks effective against all types versus previously only 7,000 attack and attacks effective against all types, which is always awesome, of course. But um, it's just such a huge upgrade, guys. Such a huge upgrade. If you haven't rainbowed his attack stat with one rainbow key sphere, goes well over 2 million. Um, on a double LR Gogeta lead. So, he, he's just a monster. He's just a monster. Like, at this point, he is pretty much on par with the AGL Super Gogeta, the one that turns blue, before 
you know, he turns Gogeta blue. So while the AGL Gogeta is in like Super Gogeta form, he's pretty much on par with him. But of course, when he becomes Gogeta blue, it's kind of unfair with the guaranteed crits. But still, like just the fact that he can still compare to the newest Dokkan Fest unit in Gogeta blue is insane. That just tells you how broken they made this Extreme Z Awakening. Um, what else do I need to tell you? His attack stat goes over 20,000, which is part of the reason why he hits so freaking hard. Uh, the fact that he is, you know, effective against all types means that he's going to be consistently putting out good damage no matter who he's facing. Um, even if it is a AGL type, he's still going to be hitting super hard. There's, there's no shortage of, like, amazing things I can say for this guy just because he's so freaking good. I... I cannot wait. I literally cannot wait for this guy to drop. I wanted him to drop like yesterday. I need him right now and it's going to be a long wait until they, they drop this guy. Hopefully, maybe, like I said in the beginning of this video, maybe they'll switch things around. They'll, they'll release Gogeta a little bit earlier than expected. That would be very, very welcome for me personally and I'm sure a lot of people would agree with that. But, you know what? There is SDR Super Gogeta's Extreme Z Awakening for you guys and um, also, if you guys are curious, his weakness is movie bosses for his event, movie bosses. Alright, moving on, we have this uh, AGL Kid Boo who dropped at the same time on JP as the STR Gogeta, but he was like crazy overshadowed because people only really cared about the STR Gogeta, but he actually got a good, you know, good, good improvement as well, actually a massive, massive improvement from his previous iteration. His leader skill is now AGL type ski plus 2, HP attack and defense plus 70%, and his super attack is supreme damage and greatly lowers defense, which is a minor change, but his passive used to be just recovers 12% HP at the start of the turn. That's literally it guys. All he did was recover 12% HP. He doesn't get any attack, any defense, anything like that. His new passive is recovers 14% attack or HP at the start of the turn and attack plus 14% and defense plus 7% per key sphere obtained. So they made him a nuker and a pretty damn good one at that as well as being a very good healer too. So massive, massive improvement to this card. Like even though he's not one of the He's not really hyped at all. Like I don't think a lot of people are that excited for his Extreme Z Awakening. Um, as far as like improvement goes from like old card to Extreme Z Awakening card, this guy might be the winner for like most improved. I'm not even kidding. Like this guy got so so much better with that Extreme Z Awakening right there. And last but not least, guys, I'm I know this video is going very long. The last one I promise is this. Super Saiyan Goku Jr. Now we have no idea what they're gonna do with this Extreme Z Awakening. All we know that it is that it's happening because it was leaked um, in the V Jump leaks that we got recently for the four year anniversary for JP. So for the four year anniversary on JP, he is getting Extreme Z Awakening and there's no reason to believe that he won't be getting the same treatment on Global once the four year anniversary comes to Global. And if you guys are curious about when that is exactly, it's basically gonna be around the end of June to the beginning of July. I don't remember the exact date to be honest, but I remember it was around that time frame. So expect him to drop around that time. And once more information comes out about what exactly he'll be doing after his EZA, then I'll make another video for you guys to present that information and keep you guys up to date in the loop and all that good stuff. But uh, that's it guys. <laughs> that was a long ass video. Like I, like I predicted, I knew that was gonna go long because there is so much to talk about, so many units, but I hope you guys still found the video, you know, interesting. Hopefully you found it useful in some way, and I actually hope you guys are still watching. If you're not, then you can't see this anyways, but if you are watching, then you guys are the real MVP. Thank you so much for sticking through for this very, very long video. I think it was important though to help people kind of decide, you know, what units they want to save their Kai's for, their Orts for, and those things, so... Overall, I mean, I thought it was an interesting topic to talk about. Let me know in the comments down below which of these Extreme Z Awakenings that are coming to Global are you the most excited for? For me personally, like I said, I already told you, SDR Super Gogeta. I think we're going to hear about that a lot in the comments, but if you guys have a, if you guys think that, then just tell me it's Super Gogeta, but if you have a different opinion, you know, you want Tech Beerus more, you want Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta more, whatever, let me know why in the comments down below. But that's gonna do it for the video, guys. That's all I gotta say, as always. If you guys like the video, 
make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, you like what you see, then make sure to hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all of my latest content. But I'm out of here. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.